As you know, valvular heart disease is a very prevalent disease in, in Western countries and it's, it's starting to be called the new uh, cardiac epidemic in the, new, in the future, no? due to aging of the population and so on. Today, the only accepted treatment for valvular heart disease is getting your uh, a timely valve, corrected, valve problem corrected, either by surgery or percutaneously. Now, the problem is in the long term, eventually these patients may develop symptoms again, even though there's nothing going wrong with their prosthesis or whatever uh, correction they had. And one of the risk factors that has been well identified with the problem of, of an disability and symptoms and mortality in the long term in patients with corrected valvular heart disease is this risk factor of pulmonary hypertension. And today, in this particular scenario, pulmonary hypertension is not possible to be treated. There is no medical treatment approved for this specific indication. So the, the issue is we need to try to offer something to these patients who have pulmonary hypertension eventually will develop right heart failure and uh, we want to, to try the possibility of testing a pulmonary vasodilator drug. The rationale is at the time the study was designed there was um, inconclusive uh, evidence of what was the role of the drug in, in left heart disease. We had some positive trials, uh, both in heart failure were reduced and with preserved ejection fraction, other studies were neutral. But we did have pretty sure uh, assuring ev evidence that the drug was safe. And uh, therefore, this specific indication, which is a combination most of the times of precapillary and postcapillary pulmonary hypertension, could be a good specific target in whether to test the drug. So we used this uh, sildenafil, which, were, which was assured by this uh, safe profile in order to test the, the possibility of improving clinical outcomes. The original part is different to conventional pulmonary hypertension trials, is that we, um, we, we used clinical outcomes, usually more in the field of heart failure trials than in pulmonary hypertension. So we used a composite clinical endpoint to define the outcome, the main efficacy outcome of the trial. This composite outcome, uh, cl composite clinical score, combines uh, a number of issues, which is death, readmission due to heart failure, um, change in the functional class, and the self-assessment score in which the patient uh, decides on his own perception if his subjectively improved or not. And then we classify patients in either improved, worsened, or unchanged. So what we found is, is changes in these particular comp composite clinical score among the two populations, taking placebo or sildenafil. That's what the rationale and the main study design was. We obviously needed uh, confirming uh, pulmonary hypertension with a mean pulmonary artery pressure higher than 30 millimeters of mercury before being enrolled in the trial. In the trial we enrolled uh, 200 patients finally, which was the uh, target sample size at the end, and uh, 100 of them were allocated to sildenafil treatment, 40 milligrams three, do, three times a day. Uh, 100, uh, it was 104 90 to active treatment, 96 to receive placebo. At the bottom, at the end of the six-month follow-up follow period, what we found was that outcomes in patients taking the active drug, taking sildenafil, was actually worse than uh, the outcome of patients taking placebo. So the uh, uh, proportion of patients worsening during follow-up was double in patients taking active drug as compared to placebo whereas the proportion of patients improving at the end six months follow-up using this composite clinical score was roughly also almost double in patients taking placebo as compared to patients taking the active drug and the overall hazard ratio for our logistic regression analysis was 0.46 so which is sorry 0.39 which is highly significant for a worse outcome in patients taking the active treatment. Well, unfortunately, we, we failed to offer a positive treatment to this particular condition. Uh, at the time, nowadays, uh, it, sildenafil is, it is frequently used 
uh, and as an off-label indication in left heart disease and specifically in patients with uh, valvular heart disease, sildenafil is frequently off -la used off-label. So the first take-home message is you shouldn't use this off-label indication of the drug. Where to go next? Well, probably we'll have to look further to the data, see if specific forms either determined either in specific hemodynamic profiles, patients with a more combined postcapillary pulmonary hypertension profile could do better, maybe some personalized targeting based on um, personal uh, genetic markers or so on could identify a specific group in which further research in pulmonary vasodilators could be tested. But at this time, we need to, a word of caution, stop, look at what's going on and don't try drugs off-label in indications which are not approved.